This may look like your average apartment building, but you're looking at the most valuable building in Tarkov. This is Chekanaya, or Chekanaya 15. Let's just call it Chek. This building is located on the west side of Streets of Tarkov, and if you're using Jindao's map, it's in the green residential area. There are two spawns that you need to know about. One is in the alleyway right behind the building, and one is in the construction area. You need to focus on these, and if you get these spawns, you need to rush to the building. The construction spawn's a little more dangerous and you may run into the other spawn, but it's still worth rushing the building, you just need to be careful of your left hand side when crossing this street. I think I've only ran into this other spawn maybe a couple times, so just be careful and run straight to this breach in the wall. Alternatively, if you do get the tank spawn in the alleyway, all you need to do is rush the north side of the building. If you took a little longer, this is where you would see the construction spawn. But all you need to do is run straight along this building and this is where the back entrance is. Leading right up these stairs is into the main hallway. So I'm not going to show you all the loot, but I'm going to show you the most important spots to loot and there's two key rooms to pay attention to. Wait, what is that? Oh, that's right. It's today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a free-to-play, turn-based tactical RPG, currently with over 80 million downloads to date. And if you're thinking, why should I download today? Well, here's the top three reasons I think you should play Raid. First of all, it has a strong emphasis on hero collection, and it's one of the main reasons why I think this game is so great. I love the fact that there's over 650 characters to collect, and then you can use artifacts, skill trees, and masteries to really tweak them the way you want, and build out the proper team that you're looking for. I also like that there's multiple ways to play this game. You can be as hardcore or casual as you'd like. There's even a feature that lets you AFK while progressing. Tell me that's not convenient. And lastly, this game is free to play with console and PC style graphics, all packed into your mobile device for convenience. Love is in the air, even in the world of Raid. New players to Raid can enjoy a special Valentine's Day themed adventure. Just download Raid Shadow Legends and then just go to raidlovequest.playerium.com and paste in your player ID to set off on your heartfelt adventure. This event lasts from February 14th to March 14th. Play one of the Valentine's themed mini games for a chance to win some fantastic in-game and real life prizes. The prizes include Valentine's Day themed Raid Champions and even Amazon gift cards up to $1,000. Even if you're an old player, you can still share the love too. Use a special promo code SAINTVALENTINE23 that everyone can use to get this small Valentine's gift from us to you. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, be sure to click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on screen. You'll get unique bonuses worth $35. This includes the champion Jotun, 100,000 silver, 50 gems, and two epic skill tomes. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. In this first room, the actual only spawns in here are just common items like ammo and stuff. Nothing really to pay attention to. Here's the northern exit of the building, and then up there is the stairwell exit where you're going to end up. The first spot is a luxury spawn in this rubble. Make sure you use your cursor to see if there's anything below. Sometimes it's a little bit hidden. In this cabinet, I found some pretty good barter items. It's worth checking on your way over. In this office, there's a jacket to loot over here to the left. I found tech items on this cabinet. And then within this suitcase hidden is also another luxury spot. If you can tell here, I used a skull to demonstrate how you're gonna need to find these items. And we're gonna be skipping some of the containers and stuff. You know, obviously you can loot that if you want to, but I just wanna show you the hot spots where you need to check every time. Over here on this desk can be tech items. I found Tetrises and stuff like that. And then on this box, I've seen luxury goods, but only like chainlets and stuff. And then check these shelves, like you can see right there. And in these books, I found lions. Um, this is a Bitcoin that I found. So it's always worth checking this little corner. On this desk, you can find tech items like GPUs, Tetrises, stuff like that. And then over here in the corner are two more luxury spawns. So check on the magazine and then in the shelf. The kitchen is really loaded with items, pretty common items. You could find like morphines on the counter and stuff. I've also found moonshine on that back right corner. And then you want to make sure you check on the middle table in the box. You can find GPUs. I think I found maybe one GPU there, but it's worth jumping up here and checking. All right, now we're gonna go through this door and it will lead to two hallways. To the left is the medical and to the right is the blockade we just came from. 
This room is all going to be medical items. As you can see here, I, I found a Vaseline that I don't normally see there. Uh, but all along the ground and on the benches can be pretty good medical items. Always worth checking real quick. And of course, the cases that are in here as well. There's also some good barter items. I didn't really look at them, but uh, behind me in a locker is some pretty good barter items. And then, of course, the jacket and stuff like that. And then in this side room on that bench, I've found stims before, but I haven't found anything recently. All right, we're going to come back around this corner, which is going to lead to the dead end and the blockade where I was talking about that leads to the old hallway. In here, you can find tech items on that spot and as well as on the ground. Uh, you can find GPUs and various tech items. And then, of course, there's like random goods on these tables. It's always worth checking this room. Then in this stairwell, you want to make sure you always check this lower stairwell inside this box. I found plenty of Bitcoins, GP coins, all the luxury items. All right, now we're going to head up to the third floor. As you can see here, this is a breach only door from the other side. So you do need to pass this and go up to the third floor. And in here is the first key we're going to be using. This first door is unlocked, so it's always worth hitting if you don't have the key. In this pot can be any kind of luxury items and high medical grade loot, so like stems and stuff like that. All right, so this first key is called Iron Gate Key, and it opens three doors up here. So you're going to consume this key pretty fast, and it's not that expensive on the market, relatively. So all you need to do is check inside this mattress. There's always going to be a lot of crap in here, but I found Bitcoins inside of it. And then over to the right is another luxury spawn where that skull is. I encourage you to look around in these rooms and look inside the rubble, because there could be spawns that I've never even seen. All right, for the next key hit, we'll go in here. I don't see a lot of spawns in here. You'll see me checking around, but really the main spot to focus on is behind this bed. Sitting on the ground is another luxury spawn. I found a stem here right now, but I found GP coins and Bitcoins and stuff like that. And the last key hit is cell one. There's not a lot of spawns in here. There is two scavs that you can loot and a lot of loose common items. And in the corner near this pooper bucket is a luxury spawn. So make sure to check that in the rubble. All right, then we're gonna head downstairs to get to the second floor hallway. You're gonna have to go through this hole in the ground, and then on this mattress is a luxury spawn. There's a lot of stuff to loot in this hallway, so definitely scan it while you're walking through here. But there's only a couple valuable spots. Here's the breach where it leads to the main staircase, and then if you come around here to the corner, there could be a tech spawn next to this washer machine. I found Tetrises, GPUs, stuff like that. And then within this room, I haven't found a lot of great stuff, but I have found moonshine on this table. So be sure to check that. All right, so here you're gonna prone under this fallen ceiling, and this is where you're gonna have to have the best key. Uh, this is called check 15, and it's not easy to get your hands on. You either need to get lucky and trade it for a sanitar key, or you could buy it on the market. Sometimes people place it for money. So I've never gotten lucky and found it, but I have found it on the market three times already by refreshing. There are about 15 different luxury spawns within this room. Check closely within all the sheets, even the lower sheets. And then make sure you check this chair beside it. Those ones will be pretty obvious. And then on the nightstand beside there. I've also found lions in the bricks. And then over in this side is usually the better side. On this chair, beside the chair, and then all on top of this little cabinet. And then the couch has several different spawns and on the floor next to the couch. This one didn't really spawn that much. Found a stem in the drawer, but normally there's a lot more. On this couch, there's several different luxury spawns. Found a GP coin this time and then on the floor next to the couch. Yeah, this was a pretty bad run, but normally it pays itself back so fast. All right, and here is the staircase landing key. It usually runs about 10,000 rubles, so super cheap, definitely worth using. And if you don't have it, you actually have to backtrack the entire way to get to the front of the building, and there's no exit. So all you have to do is drop down here, and you're at the front of the building. So it's essential for the building flow, otherwise you're gonna lose a lot of time backtracking, and it's essential for PVP. Speaking of PVP, I do have a few tips for you if you encounter people here, which you will because the loot is so good. So if you're entering this building and there's already people in here, you don't have a lot of options. You have two entrances, which is the south and north entrance. And these doors are highly defendable as I'll show you here in a moment. So your only other options are to use objects on the outside of the building to look in and hopefully get a nice peek on them. There's several objects around the entire building where you can just stand on and kind of peek into the window 
but the problem is the surrounding area is completely dangerous. So if you're holding an angle for too long, you're probably gonna get shot behind you. My advice, if you need to get a quick peek inside this building, use one of these spots momentarily and then rotate after that. Otherwise you are gonna die. If you hear multiple enemies inside, sometimes it's just better to pass the building and give up. Otherwise you're gonna have a big fight on your hands and it's gonna be tough to push. Alternatively, if you are defending this building, it's very easy to defend, especially if you have teammates. Your first priority is obviously going to be to defend the main doors. You could also defend the north door from upstairs on the stair landing. This gives you a nice little alternative angle that your enemy has to pay attention to. Another nice trick with the stair landing is you could jump across and hold an angle from above, or you could peek outside. It's a pretty nice little spot, and if people aren't paying attention, they won't even know you're up there. As you could probably already tell, it is hell attacking this building when people are inside of it. Now, if you get pushed and they do take control of the main entrances, all you need to do is push back through the hallway and get behind this barricaded fence. You'll go through the breaches through the kitchen and then stand behind this gate. That way when they get into the hallway, you have a really nice angle on it and if you don't have a flashlight on like I do here, it's going to be very hard for them to see you initially. Now, say you're solo or they have killed all your teammates and they're rushing up this hallway. You still have more options. Say they're about to push the kitchen, you do not want to get trapped in this little spot. So what you need to do is go up the staircase and get to the third floor. Once you're on the third floor, you do have a couple options. You can hold the stairs, which I don't really like doing because stair audio is strange and you don't know when you're going to get pushed exactly. So my preference is to drop to the second floor through this hole in the ground and you can either hold this hallway through several different angles or you could rotate on them really fast using stair landing, depending on how coordinated they really are. Now, when they drop down that hole and they come into the hallway, they're gonna have several angles to look at. And if you have a nice setup down the hallway, it's gonna be very hard for them to kill you. But if you get trapped down at the end of this hallway, you are stuck. So my preference is if you are gonna hold second floor, get beyond the fallen ceiling, open the stair landing, even if you don't go out of it yet, and hold the cement slabs. You'll have really nice angles on this hallway and it's going to be very hard for them to push you. One thing to note, from the third floor they can actually throw a grenade down or even shoot down through some of the cracks, so be careful if you do hear people above you. And really your last play from there would be to retreat and go through the stair landing and you could either leave from there or you can rotate on them and try to push them from behind. With the audio in this game right now, it is pretty easy to go up behind teams, especially if they're not coordinated or they're player scavs. In this clip, I used the stair landing key to come around on a huge group of player scavs that were attacking me. As you can tell, they were a little confused. Already goddamn no, four scavs. What the? <laughs> so why do you shoot him? He was a scav. <laughs> no, no, the guy to our right is a scav. The guy, the guy that shot at you. Oh. Man, you're touching me! We're all scavs here. We're all scavs. Nah, this guy's not a scav to my right, bro. This guy's... Hey, I haven't jammed, though. This is bad. This is bad. Oh, I'm getting rushed. You scab, right? I'm who is not. I mean, we, we, we got all day, man. We can just stay here and wait. He has nowhere to go. He has no idea. You guys scabs? What's going on in here? Some f***ing asshole shot some homies and ran upstairs. Let's f*** him up. We're watching the staircase. No, no, no. I was upstairs. Yo, there's a PMC coming in. I have three 
bleeds. Oh shit. <laughs> I hope you guys found this video useful and you learned something new today. I highly encourage looting this building and it's really fun PVP. It almost feels like old school dorms in a way, but with a lot more player scavs. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video or on my live stream on Twitch. I'm trying to get to a thousand follows over there, so if you want to, come drop a follow.